Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, I was asked a while ago how to best organize files. And uh, what I wanted to look at here is just kind of transition that question, focusing on how do I manage music files on Linux? Because I think that that is the, probably the more complicated way to manage files. And if you can get this one down, then you can get anything down. In reality, this is all just very simple. As far as practically organizing my files, let me just touch on that in general. You know, just decide your individual categories. So within your documents. Now, before Windows 7, when they had the easy accessible, my documents, my pictures, my music, my videos, all these separate folders on your platform, then uh, what I would do is inside of, um, just inside of the C drive or maybe inside of the documents, depending, I mean, we're going back to 95, 98 and XP days, just have a separate folder for each of those. Of course, when the Windows Vista came on board and we started to have these types of file organization, the basic organization structures that we now have in all modern systems, I transitioned over to using those. So pictures, music, things like that. Now the extra caveat is I've collected sermons for about 15 years and those do not have and never have had the nice online music scrapers that we have for our basic music. And so we'll kind of look at both of those folders here. So I'd have, uh, I'd have separate folders for those and life files, you know, it's like I have a light, uh, a section for tax returns, a section. What I do now is each year and then each one of the files required for tax return type stuff goes into each one of those. Fairly simple stuff, just organizing it out and then you can find what you need in a very rapid period of time. I do the same for photos, organizing things by categories and then by years and then by by dates or whatever else, just to make sure things never get lost. But what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and have a look at music organization because once the, this just adds an extra layer of complexity because of the various different music players. So of course you might get something like, I like my little SanDisk music player, MP3 player that has no internet connectivity at all. Love that thing. That thing only reads ID tag one. So if you, even if you're organizing your files right, you can actually go and default by organization of your files. But if your files have a, an ID tag one, they will work. That player will not read an ID tag two. Most modern devices will read an ID tag type two. However, some things still default to your basic file structure. So what do you do? You manage a file structure that's good and logical to kind of mimic the ID tags if the ID tags are missing. So let's go ahead and have a look at my, my music folders here. So these are actually all on my NAS, so I did not actually put these on this virtual machine here. I wanted to kind of show you and log into Kodi and things, but with this build on, on Kodi, it's not downloading the music files like I would like, and I'm just like, eh, I'm not going to mess with all that for the purpose of this simple video. Of course, I have the same one with my listing of sermons, different, uh, different people organized, like I think of more MacArthur than anything else probably. So inside of here, these are the series titles inside of here. Now these ones do not have quite as much organization just because these are either what I downloaded them as or what their their code is online. So these ones don't make as much sense and I completely rely on the ID tags. So I use KID3 to tag my ID tags. You can see that everything in my library, I try and have the tag two and the tag one just to make sure. Now on my production systems where I actually do tagging and things, I actually have a hotkey set, which is control one to take everything from the ID tag two and duplicate it into the ID tag one. So you can see we have the t basic title, we have the artist name, in this case, the pastor name, the album, which is the sermon series title and anything else that I might need. Some of these, since they're downloaded from their own servers, I've just left alone. Although oftentimes I need to come in here and make some adjustments, make sure that all of the artists match all of the, uh, you know, all of the, um, uh, albums match things like that, which you can do just by highlighting everything inside the folder there and you can just kind of see what is equal and what is not equal each other. So let's go ahead and go back to music because that's going to be more applicable to most people. So uh, not allowed to make fun of my music choices. No, not allowed. 
Um, and some of the stuff I really don't like. It's just in here, been in here for a long time. I was like, hey, I should get rid of it. Some of it's stuff like uh, this one is actually a friend of mine's CD. Um, very cool. And I don't know if I have my brother's stuff in here or not. Do I? I don't know if I have my brother's stuff in here or not. Anyway, um, so what we have is we have um, individual folders here. So like I said, I start with a basic hierarchy structure. So we're basically just giving the upper level folder would be uh, just the artist name. And then we'll go in. So like Pink Floyd has been one of my, classically one, one of my favorite bands. So you come in here and we can see we have one separate folder with each one of the uh, individual folders. So like these ones here, this Umaguma, this should be combined together. I'm not sure why they're separated like that. I thought I did change those. Maybe I changed them on my um, uh, one thing and I did never put them on my NAS. I don't know, whatever reason. Um, but anyway, if you click into each one of these, you'll see that I have titled them all with the number first. So, and, and you predate it with a zero. So zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, four. What this is going to do is if your individual player that you're using does not record um, ID tags or does not have the ID tag type that you use, it's going to default to the file structure in the folder. And so this makes sure that I always have a good structure no matter what I'm at, whether I'm just browsing the network to look for them or if I'm actually using some type of system, such as, for example, uh, Rhythmbox was actually able to read my NAS here. Actually, I did that. I didn't do that with my music, though, and they did this with the sermon files. But you can kind of see I can sort by my artist, sort by my album names, things like that. So uh, with this, each one of the individual folders here is set down. So the artist and then the album and then inside of here is each one of these. And of course, if I right click and go into Kid 3, you'll see that we have the titles, um, the uh, artists, the albums, and then everything is copied. Same as the IDT, ID tag 1, ID tag 2. I do not bother putting the album artwork on each of these guys here just because that will completely massively increase the size of my library. And really the one place where I do use the library a lot is Kodi, which you can set Kodi to use the, um, go ahead and download the album art from online. And that works pretty well. Now it does take a little bit of time. It's nothing that, that uh, will happen instantaneously. So if I boot up Kodi on this thing, um, it's not pulling my album art yet. Um, I don't know why that is, but this is always a little bit of a fight and I did not want to pull that fight just to work with Cody for this brief video here. I actually have all of my main production Cody systems work just fine and, um, have the structure. So that's kind of how you do your organization. Just uh, having your files out, your organization, your hierarchy. Now, as far as tagging things, I went into this program a couple times already. To tag your things, um, there are a couple different applications. You might use a different one than I do, but I've always liked Kid3. It's given me the best overall results. There's a few different tagging applications I've used. This is the one that, to me, made the most sense. You can also customize the UI a little bit. So we can see here the formatting, the track, and the title. You can go from tag one, from tag two, from tag one, from tag two. So you can do mass updates, mass changes to things just very quickly. Uh, just by highlighting things, I can see where we are at. We can go up folders. So this is uh, the folder listing here. So if we wanted to look at, um, for example, this guy here, here's metal. So I have these four or these six songs here. So we can make any adjustments. Now, again, anything that I'd need to make an adjustment to, I can make it just on tag two and then hit the from tag two option. It's going to grab all the information in tag two and put it up in tag one. Any errors, it will have that title highlighted in red and it will indicate it as well by a red color in your uh, archive list here. So as far as tagging your music files, KID3 is the best way to do that. Uh, there's, like I said, a few other things as well. Now what that's going to give you is the ability to use any one of the variety of different things. Now, some some systems work better with network tools than others. So Rhythmbox, I did notice that Rhythmbox did actually connect better to, to this. So if I were to right-click in Rhythmbox, uh, I think it's right-click. Clicking the button down here. Uh, let's see. 
So it's, uh, this is why I don't like Rhythmbox. It's like, what are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> let's go to music folder and uh, let's see if we can get it to copy everything from here. So this is the individual location. We're going to need to come up and add the music. There it is. There it goes. Now it's adding my music. It will take some time, especially since we're using uh, network serves. And you can see there's, you know, about 2,098 songs on this. Uh, for if that seems very low to you, I don't listen to a lot of music. And as you can kind of tell from the age of the music, I've not really added much music to my collection since probably around high school. So, you know. But again, we can click by our artist over here. So it looks like the classical is being populated now. You see the variety of artists over here. There's genre. Uh, here's basically by titles, by albums. So utilizing this structure, this is actually reading from the ID tags. Um, so this is actually importing in the information based on the ID tags. This structure, even if it could not spot an ID tag, it would actually um, it would actually just kind of default to the structure. I have no idea what this is. What are you? Hmm. Radio Chaos. I'm not sure why uh, that title is listed like that. That should be. Let's go and just update that. Radio Chaos. Huh. Interesting. I have no idea why that happened. Uh, it might have been a weird thing copying from file structure since I started this whole library a long time back, but uh, or it just automatically copied the information on wrong from online. So, anyway, um, that is uh, organizing your music files on Linux. This type of structure is going to allow you then to plug it into most of your media players. Now, not all media players is going to play as well with the networking. Uh, Rhythmbox does seem to play well with networking as far as libraries are concerned. Um, I, my favorite is Banshee. Uh, Banshee, for me, seems to be crashing anytime I attempt to access the network serves. Uh, I do use Banshee on my laptops because it works flawlessly for that. This is my favorite player. It doesn't work well with network shares. Cody works phenomenally with network shares. I'm not sure if... Um, there's another one called Lollipop, which I've not tested with network shares or not. So I'm using this on a network share. So if you're using network share, Rhythmbox, Cody, good ways to go. Uh, probably Rhythmbox for streamlining things, Cody for more, you know, more dedicated stuff. Um, local files, Banshee's my favorite. Lollipop should be good. And there's some other ones as well. Like there's, uh, there's a new one for, called Music, which is just a GNOME music thing. I think that this is going to access, you know, work well just with your local files. So there is your organizing music on Linux. As far as, let me just have a, a few closing comments here. I first started organizing all of my files and things back, of course, in Windows XP days, and that was very easy to edit and to uh, adjust your tags. Windows 7 actually made it very hard to do adjust your tags. Uh, when you, you have the ability to right click on a music file inside Windows shell and do that, there are separate applications, but I always like just doing it right from inside the Windows shell. But Windows 7 really broke that function and made it a lot harder to use. And it actually turned out that it was not doing ID1 and ID2 tags. That's why I switch over to Linux. And since I've been on Linux, the organization of music files is infinitely better. Anything from this, and we didn't cover it in this video, but uh, there are some terminal uh, conversion commands. So if you need to convert your MP3s. So, you know, I had some things that originally got put on as WMA because I'm like, this new WMA format came out. It's like, wow, this is just like an MP3, but it's smaller. Let's use those. And then you figure out that they're really not as compatible as MP3s are and various different things. And so uh, I had to figure out how to get all those converted. Well, the online Linux terminal commands and uh, batch scripts allowed me to do that. So I did have some videos about how to use those tools as far as audiobooks, because when you're doing audiobook production, um, I make my audiobooks in a super high quality that is required for distribution through the networks. And then I just run the script to drop down the size to pass it on to sell it directly on my own sites, things like that. So those tools are all out there. Linux just makes managing music so much better than it ever was on Windows as far as my experiences. So there's that, and hopefully that also gave you enough information and insight into organizing your basic personal files as well, which we didn't get into as much here. It's just, it's a very simple, similar structure. You know, categories, subcategories, sub-subcategories, and away you go. 
so let me know your thoughts on all these things in the comments down below.